Welcome back everyone, this is Coaster Daddy, and I am here to bring you guys a pretty big video. This is my updated favorite coasters list. If you wish to watch my original favorite coasters video from a year ago, I will have that linked in the description. A lot has changed for me in the past year, and this list is going to be drastically different from what I presented in December of 2018. I was fortunate to experience 30 new coaster credits in 2019, and I even got to cross off a couple rides that were very high on my bucket list, and even a couple new for 2019 rides as well. Before I jump into this, I want to remind everybody that this is purely my opinion, what I found to be the best overall out of the coasters I've personally experienced. Since I really haven't been on a lot of rides yet, many of your favorites will likely not be represented here. Also, this is certainly no set in stone list and will change over time, especially as I am planning on riding more new coasters than ever during the 2020 season. Another really big thing that I always keep in mind that I want to remind everybody about is even though I love doing these rankings and watching these, the most important thing is just having fun. You know, that's what riding roller coasters is about is just having fun. So don't take it too seriously. With that in mind, let's get into the list. Before I start with my 15 official favorite roller coasters, I want to highlight five coasters that just barely miss the cut that rank at number 16 through number 20. Going from 20 down to 16, we have Steel Curtain, the new for 2019 SNS Hyper Coaster at Kennywood, Copperhead Strike, the Mac Multi Launch at Carowinds, Thunderbird, the Launch B&M Wing Coaster at Holiday World, Dominator, the B&M Floorless Coaster at King's Dominion, and last but not least, the legendary wooden monster known as the Beast at King's Island in Mason, Ohio. These are all great rides in my opinion, but they just barely missed the cut and just couldn't quite make it into my top 15. Starting off here at the number 15 spot, we have Banshee, the monstrous B&M inverted coaster at Kings Island. This is a fantastic ride that I got to experience a few different times in 2019. As many of you may know from watching my original review, I found this ride to be pretty rough at first. It had a very noticeable rattle and it was just really unbearable and it really affected my ride experience but I'm very happy to say I got to experience this on closing weekend and I got a couple rides on it again and it was actually running very smooth and the layout of this is just fantastic it's really unique for an inverted coaster and it is just so intense Banshee is just a fantastic inverted coaster Number 14 is a really historic ride. This is Magnum XL200 at Cedar Point. For many, many years, up until this year, it was pretty high in my top 10. And since I've gotten to so many new coasters, it unfortunately had to be bumped down to the number 14 spot. But Magnum is just an excellent ride, and it's one of those ones that is just so fun, and I could just marathon it over and over. In fact, that's what I do a lot of times when I go to Cedar Point, either to start off my visit or right before leaving, I'll just get several laps on Magnum. Of course, it has all of those wicked airtime hills at the end that just eject you out of your seat. It's probably the best airtime in the park. I mean, it is truly phenomenal. Number 13 is Raven, a Custom Coasters International wooden coaster at Holiday World. This ride just really took me by surprise. I had always wanted to ride this from the time I was about 10 years old until I finally rode it in 2015. Raven was always talked about in my early days as an enthusiast as being one of the top wooden coasters in the world. Many people ranked it as the best wooden coaster out there before rides like the Voyage opened. And Raven is still a phenomenal ride in my opinion. It is really intense. It's a short ride, but it really packs a punch. And of course, it has a big drop in the middle of the ride, which really catches you by surprise. Raven is just an all-around awesome ride that tends to get a little bit overlooked these days, unfortunately. Number 12 is Afterburn, another B&M inverted coaster. In fact, this is my favorite B&M invert out of the three that I've experienced. This one really surprised me. I didn't hear a whole lot about this coaster before going into it. I grayed out on this ride. It was so intense just the whole way through. You're just hauling through this layout. That bat wing is without a doubt the most intense moment of the ride. I grayed out at the bottom of the bat wing element. And it's just so smooth, even for a 20-year-old coaster. Definitely don't skip out on Afterburn if you're at Carowinds. At the number 11 spot, barely missing my top 10, is Mystic Timbers, the Great Coasters International Woody at Kings Island. 
Mystic Timbers has a pretty simple layout. It's just an out and back layout, several tiny little bunny hops. This one really surprised me too with its intensity. It just throws you around everywhere. It's not rough. It's very comfortable, but it has some great laterals. It has great pops of ejector airtime all throughout the ride. And it's not the longest ride, but I don't think it's too short either. To me, it's just kind of perfect. And I just love going on that journey over the river in Rivertown and just coming back and it, you're just totally secluded from everything else, which is one of the great things about many rides at Kings Island. This is one of the best rides in the park. Mystic Timbers is truly a phenomenal coaster. Even with all of the hype I heard about it before riding it, it really took me by surprise. Starting off my top 10 is Millennium Force at Cedar Point, the world's first full circuit giga coaster. This ride is looked at by many enthusiasts nowadays as being so overrated, but so many people say it's overrated that I guess it's kind of become underrated. Either way, I don't really care about any of that. To me, it's just a phenomenal ride. It's really fun. It's not the most intense ride out there, but I wouldn't call it forceless like many people do. Um, it has a couple, you know, fairly intense moments, and I think the airtime is underrated on this too. It's not focused on the airtime, but it has a few really good airtime moments. I just love sitting in the back seat and just getting absolutely thrown out of the seat going down that first drop. One of my favorite first drops I've ever experienced, no doubt. It's still a pretty smooth ride after 20 years, and it's, of course, a very long ride as well. A ride on Millennium Force is definitely worth the wait. Millennium Force still gets a very long line, and it's still a fantastic coaster in my opinion. At number 9, Phantom's Revenge at Kennywood, which was of course modified from the original Steel Phantom, an aerodynamics looper, into the Morgan Hypercoaster, known as Phantom's Revenge. This is a really smooth ride, it's really really intense, and it has some of the most insane ejector airtime I've ever experienced. It's a short ride, but it packs such a punch in that 3200 feet of track. There's nothing quite like it. It's a really unique hyper coaster. And the second drop, of course, is a lot bigger than the first. It has that 230 foot drop and you reach 85 miles an hour and you definitely feel it at the bottom of that drop. You hit some pretty strong positive G's right there. I got on this coaster for the first time in about eight years this year and I had forgotten just how intense it was. I remember that insane ejector airtime, but I really forgot how intense the positive G's were. So that really took me by surprise. And I actually moved this coaster up several spots in my ranking. Since I hadn't ridden it in so long, I didn't remember it as well as many of the other coasters I've been on. So after riding it again this year, it actually moved up several spots in my rankings. And because of that, even though it might be down a couple spots from the list that I did last year, it's actually moved up in my rankings a lot and it still sits at the number nine spot and it absolutely deserves it. At number eight, Diamondback, the B&M Hyper Coaster at Kings Island. I rode my first B&M Hypercoasters this year in 2019. The first one was Intimidator at Carowinds. I was very underwhelmed by Intimidator. I got about 7 or 8 rides on it, and it was a very mixed bag. Some of the rides were stronger, some of them were pretty weak, some of them were just kind of in the middle, but nothing really blew me away. It just left me wanting a lot more, so I was pretty disappointed for it being my first B&M Hypercoaster. But then a couple months later, I got to experience Diamondback, and I couldn't believe how much of a difference there was. I mean, Diamondback really blew me away. Diamondback just has an insane amount of great sustained floater airtime all throughout the ride. It's not very intense. Being a B&M Hyper, it's just very graceful. It has those huge airtime hills and you just float over the top of them slowly and dive back down and you're basically just going up and down and there's a couple helixes thrown in there and of course it has the magnificent looking splashdown effect at the end of the ride. It's a gorgeous ride and it's huge. It's fast. To me, I just can't get enough of Diamondback. I just absolutely fell in love with this ride when I rode it for the first time at Kings Island and it is my favorite ride in the park. At number 7 is the coaster that sort of started off this channel. My very first video was a review of Ravine Flyer 2 at Waldemere, which is a Gravity Group wooden coaster. I rode this for the first time in 2009, a year after it opened, and Ever since then, it's always been one of my absolute top coasters. I mean, it, it is insane. It's really intense. Has some great airtime. Has those 90 degree bank turns where you're dipping down into the ravine. And Ravine Flyer 2 is just an excellent wooden coaster that, to me, has only gotten better with age. It's gotten much rougher, and to me, that works with the ride instead of against it. It's not uncomfortable, but it provides a rough, out-of-control wooden coaster experience. It has the classic PTC trains on it. 
Ravine Flyer 2 is a coaster that you must absolutely experience. If you're ever around here, don't skip out on Waldemir. Trust me, it is worth it just for Ravine Flyer 2. Number 6 is Maverick, the Intamin Blitz Coaster at Cedar Point. I got to ride Maverick in opening year, and it's always been one of my favorite coasters ever since first experiencing it. I don't really have to uh, introduce this ride too much. Everybody knows Maverick. It has some great airtime. It's really intense, very whippy. Just you're going from left to right and then up into some amazing airtime hills. There's the horseshoe element, which has two inversions. That second launch is just out of this world, especially riding it at night when you can't see anything at all in that tunnel and you just hit that launch going 70 miles an hour and you you just get whipped to the left and going out of that tunnel. It's an amazing experience. There is no other park out there that has the one-two punch like Cedar Point does. You know, you have two of the world's best coasters sitting right next to each other in Frontier Town. It has the over-the-shoulder restraints, kind of like I-305 has. They're very comfortable. They don't hinder the ride experience at all, in my opinion. They're much better than the hard over-the-shoulder restraints that used to have. Maverick is definitely a must-ride at Cedar Point. Getting into the top five here, we're starting off with Twisted Timbers, the RMC conversion of the Hurler Wooden Coaster at King's Dominion. Twisted Timbers, it's an RMC. It just has tons of great ejector airtime. It starts off with a barrel roll drop, which I loved, and then you go through an overbank turn, and then you hit the best part of the ride, that trifecta of those three camelback airtime hills, and you just get absolutely flung out of your seat over every single one of those hills. There's three inversions thrown in there. There's a zero G roll, a cutback, and the barrel roll drop, and those are all excellent. Obviously, it's very smooth being an RMC. There's no roughness whatsoever. It's glossy smooth. And there's not much else to say about this. If you've ridden RMC, you pretty much know what this feels like, but it's an excellent ride nonetheless, which is why it sits at my number five spot. Number four is The Voyage at Holiday World a massive gravity group wooden coaster. This is one that I really want to get back to and experience. I need to get back to Holiday World. Um, I don't remember Voyage nearly as good as many of the other rides on this list, but I do recall it being an excellent ride. I remember it being very rough. It's just a rough ride. They do as best as they can to maintain this. It's a huge wooden coaster. They're actually doing an extensive retracking on it right now for the 2020 season, and hopefully I can get back to Holiday World in 2020. Voyage is just an excellent coaster. Coaster has tons of airtime. Of course, before Steel Vengeance opened, Voyage had more airtime than any other coaster in the world. It doesn't have really strong airtime, but the sheer quantity is great. It's a very long ride. It's the second longest wooden coaster in the world, right behind the Beast. And much like the Beast, it goes way back into the woods where you can't really see any of it. And after the first couple hills on the Voyage, you're just staying really low to the ground. So you're just flying through these 90 degree bank turns. You have the awesome spaghetti bowl section, which is so intense. You you do hit the mid-course brake run, but then you gain all of your speed back when you go down that triple down and you just weave your way through the structure going back to the station. This ride is just magnificently designed. It's basically designed on a hill, so as you're going out into the woods, you're actually going up a hill, and the elevation changes by about 100 feet, but that means when you're making your return back to the station, you're on a descent down that 100-foot hill that you just traveled up. That's kind of what allows Voyage to maintain its speed throughout the whole ride. It's just a marvel of engineering in my opinion, and something every enthusiast must experience. At the number 3 spot, I have Intimidator 305, the massive Intamin Giga Coaster located at King's Dominion. Intimidator 305 is known as one of the most intense roller coasters ever built, and that's for very good reason. Of course, it has that bank turn right after the 300 foot first drop that had to be reprofiled after the first year, as too many people were blacking out. And even to this day, you still gray out so much on that turn. Some people even still black out. On every single one of my seven rides, I got. I grayed out so hard on that turn. Even though it was one of my very top bucket list coasters, I was still kind of afraid because I was worried that it would maybe be too intense for me to enjoy, but luckily that was not the case, and I actually rode this ride several times in a row without much of an issue. I mean, it's just a really intense ride, and that's mainly what it focuses on. It's not very diverse, it is kind of a one-trick pony, to be completely honest, but it is just so good with its sheer intensity, and there are even a few pretty good pops of airtime thrown in there as well. You get some really good floater going over that hill after the first drop, and then there are two bunny hills about halfway through the ride that provide pretty good floater airtime as well. 
And when you hit the brake run on this ride, you still have to be going at least 60 miles an hour. This is pretty short for a Giga Coaster. It only has 5,100 feet of track, but it doesn't really need to be any longer. And it packs such a huge punch in that ride time that what you get is just unlike anything else. I don't think we'll ever see another coaster like Intimidator 305 ever built again, honestly. It's not very popular with the general public. I never waited for this ride at all, besides like waiting three or four ride cycles at most for the front seat. I'm sure it does get a line when the park gets really busy, but from what I've heard, it's just not popular with the general public, and I can see why. This ride is not for everybody. If you're not a fan of really intense coasters, this definitely isn't for you, but in my opinion, Intimidator 305 absolutely deserves to be called one of the best coasters out there. Some people put it as their number one coaster and I can definitely see why. To me, it's a fantastic ride. I rode I-305 a couple days before I rode my number two coaster actually. I rode Fury 325 two days afterwards which became my number two coaster. At first when I rode Fury 325, I was a little underwhelmed but after I rode it more and more, it warmed up on me. At first I wasn't sure whether I preferred I-305 or Fury 325, but I decided that Fury 325 is my number two coaster because it's a really long ride. It is still really intense, nothing like I-305, but it is a really intense ride. It provides a lot of great airtime, and it's just more diverse. It has a lot of great elements. The layout is fantastic. It has a perfect layout, and that's one of the biggest things with this ride. It's just so great looking. I could just take pictures of this all day. You walk under Fury as you're walking into the the entrance of the park and it's just a great way to get you amped up as you're walking in everybody knows fury if you're an enthusiast you have definitely heard about this ride for some people it's way over hyped and i can see that it does get hyped up a lot to me it's just a great ride because it's smooth it's intense it has great airtime, and it's just really fun coming in at the number one spot this is absolutely no surprise at all to anyone Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point, the massive RMC redo of Mean Streak. Steel Vengeance is, without a doubt, the best coaster I've ever experienced. It's not even close, to be honest. I know this is so basic to put Steel Vengeance at number one, but it ranks number one for most people for a very good reason. Of course, it's just like any other RMC. It's smooth. It has tons of airtime. In fact, Steel Vengeance has more airtime than any other coaster on the planet. You're out of your seat more than you're in your seat, it seems like. It's a very long ride. It goes around the structure in three laps. It holds its speed throughout very well. As you're going throughout the ride, you're just going through smaller and smaller elements. The elements get tighter and tighter, so it definitely retains that feeling of speed. And then you end the ride with that excellent finale of six airtime hops. To me, Steel Vengeance really is a perfect ride. It's long, it has tons of airtime, it's perfectly smooth. There is not a bad element on this ride. In fact, as many people will say, because of how great this whole ride is, the first 200 foot drop is actually left in the dust a little bit. I mean, it's a fantastic drop, it has fantastic ejector airtime, but because of how good the whole ride is, the first 200 foot vertical drop, you kind of forget about, but it's a fantastic drop, and you just haul until the very end. I've never experienced anything like Steel Vengeance. Steel Vengeance is just on a whole different level. It does feel like an RMC, yes, and it has what RMC is known for, but it puts all of that into one ride. It makes it really long, it's huge, and definitely get out to Cedar Point and experience Steel Vengeance if you haven't yet. To me, it is absolutely worth all of the hype it gets. And that will wrap up this year's list of my favorite coasters. Thank you all so much for watching this. 2019 has been a fantastic year for my channel and for experiencing new parks and coasters, and I can't wait to share more experiences with you in the year 2020. Don't forget to leave your comments about your favorite coasters that you've personally ridden and why you may agree or disagree with my ranking. To me, this is one of the reasons sharing our opinions is so fun, as we all have different opinions, but at the end of the day, we all still love the same thing, good roller coasters. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this video, like my page Coaster Daddy on Facebook, and follow me at Coaster Daddy Official on Instagram. Thank you all so much again for watching. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.